had the good fortune to get to play in a playtest of Bellwright before it launched. And so as I was going along, of course I had to test things out here and there to figure things out for you guys. Here are some of the tips and tricks that I learned along the way. In order to get new blueprints, you go to the research desk and select which one you want to do research on to figure out how to make it. In order to research how to make it, it'll show you what resources you need. And then you and your helpers can add those items. And it takes a certain amount of time to be able to get this researched. Once it's researched, like my standing torches now, it shows up on my tech tree of things that I'm able to make now. So then I can go to my workbench and now I have the recipe for making a standing torch. Once you have the parts to build something, it'll start building it, but you need to stay in the menu for it to finish its building time or it'll pause. Once it's created, it goes into your inventory. In your shack, you have a private stash chest. You can put any resources or items in there that you don't want your workers to use. Seasons will change, but the first winter is pretty mild, so you don't have to worry about it too much if you're not totally set up yet. However, one of the challenges with winter time is that it makes it much more difficult to find any plants. Even though I'm in an area where flax and wheat grow, there's none to be found in the snow. In your inventory, you can't stack items. Each one will take up an individual space. However, when you're dealing with storage, of any kind, you can stack items. And to move them between inventory, you can simply drag and drop or you can choose how you want to move how many. Shift to split and choose how many you want. Control click to move just one or alt click to move the whole stack. One of the early things you're gonna win to build is a campfire. Select it and press F to place the construction site. Place down the blueprint and add the ingredients. And then you have the parts in the pile, so then you can actually build the parts into the actual campfire. And make sure you do it in a certain order. It's like connect the dot. And then it's all made. You can place a piece of meat on each of these posts around the campfire. But you need to add wood into the fire for it to actually cook. And then you get cooked meat. It'll make a little sound when it's finished but it takes quite a while to cook. I was beginning to think I just didn't know how to pick it up. My cooked meat was missing from the campfire and so I checked my camp chest and sure enough, it was put in here by a helper. You can set research tasks to go while you're off doing other things and when you get back, you'll have the ability to make them. When I'm having something researched for how to get the blueprint, I can click the priority level right up here and increase how high or low the priority is or how quickly that should get done in the village. I can also change the priority for my helper if I want them to focus more on research for example. I can make that their top priority. So when you go up to the workbench there are two different ways to interact with it. On the left it says simple workbench manage and on the right it says simple workbench craft. If you click on the right side, it gives you the recipes that you can make, which you can queue up and it'll make automatically when you come back with those resources. Or on the left, this is managing what you want your helpers to make. So if you go in here and select something to be made, a worker will be automatically assigned to bring the resources and make this item. If it seems like nothing's being made, then you need to check what your workers are assigned to do and what their priorities are to see if someone has the availability to be assigned to this particular workbench. Once you've put something in the queue to be built, it doesn't look like you can change where it is. It's going to build them in the order that you put them in the list. You can take it out of the list, but you can't move it, at least once it's started. I don't see a way to make it cancel building that torch. Now I add the small trap and it goes next on the list and it automatically starts making the next one. But since I'm doing the crafting instead of my helper, I have to stand here in the workbench or it will pause. 
If you want to repair an item, you go up to the workbench, change from craft over to repair, and choose the item that you want repaired. Remember that you don't have to have all the components ready when you're placing out the items in your village. You can simply lay out the blueprint of where you want them to be and your helpers will go and get their resources. When you're trying to put weapons and items in your quick bar slots, you have three slots for weapons and it makes a difference what you put where. You have a first belt slot, a second belt slot, and a back slot. So I can put like a club or an ax in one of the first two slots. But if I try to put my ax on number three, it's gonna tell me wrong slot for this item. Only a back slot type item could go there. So when I try to move something over, a lot of the slots will X out telling me you can't put this there. I like how as you're walking along, you can look at your inventory and keep moving while you're going along. You don't like stop, come to a dead standstill. So once I've built the cam chest, it says this is a small shared container. It'll hold 50 items and I can sort of what I want to look for and see in there. Then once I built my chest, my helper took the things that I had stored at their house and brought it over and put it in the community storage. You can see the icon over the helper's head changing. Right now, he's working on stuff for storage. When you look in the helper's menu, there's the worker icon, the companion icon, where they follow you, and the guard icon, where they patrol the area. So you can get a quick glance of what they're working on at that time. So you can turn either one of the missions into the elder at a time and get the next part of the mission. and it gives you the 50 trust, even if you only turn in one. If you wanna make something easier to find, you can look on your map and go to what it is you're trying to get to. Say I wanna to go to Shack 2. If I click on Shack 2, I can go over here and mark it as a waypoint. And now it shows up on my mini map down on the right, so I can head in that direction. You'll find different books along the way. They can be used to teach you or your helpers new skills. And they're on different topics like farming, hunting. There are different levels of books. A novice level can be read by anyone, but more advanced books, you need to be a higher level skill. You use it for yourself, select the book and hit P. And then when you click on the attribute that it is about, you'll begin reading that book. You don't have to stay in your inventory the whole time and it'll keep reading while you're doing other things. For your helper, you talk to them and go to attributes, click on the skill that you want them to read a book about, and then if you scroll down, you can see that my helper is now reading that book about hunting and it's been taken out of my inventory. When they're done, you can see that their experience in hunting has increased. And if I look at my attributes, so has mine. Quick tip for storing meat. If you put meat on the campfire while the fire is out, it seems like it will sit there and wait for you and won't go bad. If I look at my inventory at the health of my berries, it's about a third of the way down. Now if I go to sleep, when I wake up and look at my inventory, all of my food has spoiled. Well, all of my berries. The mushroom just has less health. He just made a small trap for me. Good thing because this trap is broken. Now I can replace the broken trap with the one that he made. Add my mushroom and it's good to go again. I got a warning when I woke up this morning that winter is coming in two days. So I'm going to come and pick all of this flax because I won't be able to find it in the winter time. If you build a stinky outhouse, you can put items in there to be destroyed forever. So you're not dropping bags of loot all over your world. If you put an item in the outhouse to be destroyed, get out. You can go back in 
and it doesn't happen instantaneously. So you do have a second to reconsider. I can see a red dot on my mini map, which means there's a bad guy there. That's the wolf that I'm looking for for my quest. If I want to zoom in and out to see better where it is on the mini map, I can do three and nine on the keypad. Since it's dark, I can look at my torch and the torch can be held in the left hand. Other things may be in the right hand, so you can't carry them at the same time in your weapon slots. It's a good idea to have your worker make themselves an X. That way, they'll be able to do more to help you out. While you're off running errands, doing quests, it's good to go ahead and put down other build pieces that you're going to want, including an extra housing tent because you're going to need a place for people to live if they're going to come and join your village. Just like us, they have two belt slots. And then you can make whatever priority for that tool higher so they'll work on that project. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, here comes the raid. Get ready, Lubomir. How to handle a raid when you're a noob in Velrite. Look for that in an upcoming guide. Leave a like if you found this helpful and make sure to free subscribe for more Velrite. Until next time, happy gaming.